everyone, it's Sharon, Recreation Programmer for Child, Youth, and Family at the City of Burlington, and today I have a craft slash science project for you to do. We're going to make crystal letters and shapes today. So you're going to need a few basic things for this. A glass jar is best, especially if it's clear, just because then you can see some of the magic happen. Tall, short, doesn't really matter. The only thing that it will affect is how big or small your letters or your shapes need to be. You're gonna need some borax. Some people do have some skin reactions to this, so just make sure that you're carrot cautious when you're using it. I've put some of it aside in this so it's just easier for myself to handle. If you have kids and things like that, it's a way for them to be able to manage it without making a giant mess as well as potentially not getting them on themselves. You're going to need a tablespoon because for this, you are going to need three tablespoons of borax for every one cup of water. So I have a measuring cup here and you are going to be needing water. A pencil, a pen, a popsicle stick, anything that's gonna fit across the mouth of your jar. Some string or fishing line will work as well. And I have some scissors pipe cleaners, and I also have some food dye, but you don't need it. Pipe cleaners are quite pretty on their own. They already have color, so you don't need to have a pipe cleaner. Fiddly bits that you might need to assist your kids with or might need some help with are tying string around a pencil. It's not super easy. And you also need to look at sort of how long you want it to be um, because you don't want it to touch the bottom of your jar. This is really great practice for little ones to create shapes or letters, numbers, that sort of thing using pipe cleaners. So you could draw them on a piece of paper and have them follow that shape with the pipe cleaner or you can have them do some freehand and see how they do. They get to create, doesn't really matter. Um, the only thing would be as long as it's going to fit in your jar. So if it's something longer, if they have a long name and they wanna do their full name even in cursive, they're going to need a taller jar. So you may need to trim your pipe cleaner, you might be fine the length that it is depending on what they do with it. I have made the letter S and I fancied it up a little bit. You're then going to need to tie that onto your pencil, but I'm going to need to see sort of how it needs to hang in here so that it's going to hang in my solution. So I don't need all of this string, I just need a tiny little bit. And I apologize, this is the fiddly bit that takes a little bit of time and effort that you may need to get some assistance with or to assist with. There, uh, cut off the excess because it's a part of this experiment. This will touch anything. And then just do a quick measure. Yep, that hangs nicely, great. So you can set that aside. For borax to dissolve, the hotter the water, the better. It's just going to help with that dissolving process. However, if you do have little hands, I can suggest that they can help measure out the borax. So we're gonna do one, two, and three of the borax. And as I said before, for every three tablespoons of borax, you need a cup of water. I have pre-boiled water here. As I said, if you have little hands, my suggestion would be is that you pour, you measure out this. You can pour in some of your hot water and you can give them pot holders to wear and they can mix that. And then they can pour in the rest of the water, but it could just be warm at that point that it's not going to burn them. Just so then they get to have the opportunity to do some of this without you having to worry about them burning. It does not have to be boiling. It needs to be pretty hot though. So um, you can think of sort of tub water temperature would work. It just helps with the dissolving of the borax. And you're just going to mix that up. Now I know for these particular jars, they take about two cups of water, so I'm going to need more. Um, but it is a little bit easier to mix a small amount of borax and then add some more 
um, as you go. Uh, otherwise it clumps up. Um, and this isn't quite too. So as we said, for every three tablespoons, you want a cup of water. So I did about two and a half tablespoons and I am going to do slightly less than a cup of water. I'm just going to fill it up and then we'll see what happens. So stir, stir, stir. Get that in there. For this one, I am going to add a little bit of the food coloring. I did this one previously and you can just see it's suspended in the solution, just hanging out in there. Uh, and you don't have to, as I said, that's a very pretty pink color. It doesn't need to have any food coloring, but I just want to see. So I'm going to add a little bit of purple food coloring to this little lovely. It does make it harder to see what's happening in the jar, but we do know that people like to make things fancy. So why not? So you're going to mix, 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 mix. I can still see that I have some clumps, but for the vast majority, you want to make sure that it's mixed up. So mix up as much as possible. Then you're going to take your shape and you're slowly sink it in there because you want the, it's going to float a little bit, is that you want it to soak up some of that water. And that is the nice thing about the pipe cleaners because it has that fuzz on the outside. It'll soak up the water and it'll stay down and it won't float away. So there it is. This is the hardest part about this experiment, especially if you're younger, is that you need to wait. There is a waiting aspect to this. So for the science to happen, as the borax starts to, as the water cools down and the borax starts to solidify, it will solidify in anything that it happens to be touching. So all of the pipe cleaner and even some of your string, it's going to cling to that and it's gonna to start to form crystals as it, as it dries, if you will. Um, but it's a, a longer process. It's not something that you're going to sit here and be able to watch happen right this second. I started my first one at 8 PM last night. And when I was, I got up to check on it again around eight o'clock this morning, it was beautiful. So it could be a good just before bed craft and experiment that you could do because then your kids are going to wake up and the, the hard part, the waiting is going to be done and they'll have their finished product. However, if you do want to see some of the science in action, you're going to have to set these aside somewhere so that little fingers aren't in them. Set them aside and let them sit and come back and check on them in an hour, two hours, four hours, and you're going to start seeing that process happen, which is really, really neat. And then you can talk about the science behind it. What you are going to end up having in the end is this beautiful crystal letter or shape. So all of those crystals have formed around it um, and have created this really, really pretty craft with science behind it. This was a little bit long. I was a little bit concerned when I went to pull it out this morning because it was stuck. Don't worry about it. Pour out the liquid and then you can just reach in and honestly, it'll break right off. And I have crystals on the bottom. So you can talk about how when it forms the crystals, it's forming it on things that it's touching. So this little tiny piece, if you can see it, there's a little tiny piece of leftover flushing line and it has formed on that as well. So these look super pretty. You can hang them in the window and they're going to catch the light and they're going to look really nice. If you've got some food coloring in the water, the crystals will have taken on some of that hue. You could make it into a mobile, or you can just hang it on your door if you really wanted to. But that's it. This is your Borax Crystal Letters experiment. So it's science and crafts in one. Don't forget to stay safe and live and play every day. And we'll see you next time. Bye.